cranberry. Looks like we're alive. Where's my cranberry juice? I can't go out without my cranberry juice. Where is that? Well, oh, and I'm going to eat, eat a banana too. I don't want to cramp up. But uh, all right, who knows? Um, we'll, uh, we'll get started here in just a second. So, uh, hey. Where's my There It Is Man? I don't have There It Is Man today. I got nobody. What's going on here? Uh, greetings, coin lovers. We're starting a little bit early. Scott here for Hoogie's Hobby Shop. And uh, I've been practicing doing this. You hear that? Got a couple of old kind of beat up Morgan Silver Dollars. And yesterday we were we were trying to pull that off. I don't, I'm not wearing the gloves. But it works with a hammer. It even works with. Now this is the one you need to hit the hit the uh, hit the bell with. If you hit the like and hit the bell, use a hammer like this on the bell, and even it works. Hear that? But you got to have no gloves on, or it'll fall. And I'm, I'm working by myself here, so we don't want that. Getting some people in already. Lincoln's here. Trey, Coin Finders, Mantic. Uh, who else? At Coin, uh, Melvin's here. Ken Peavy's here. Uh, we're already getting a already getting a, a, a quorum, so that's great. Um, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently here. Y'all probably won't notice it, but one of these days, there's there's two things I'd like to ma uh, master. And one is the OBS software, and the other is the English language. Um, if I can do that, I think I'll be all right. But uh, I don't have high hopes of either one. Let's see if we can get this over here. Yeah, here we go. Move that up there. Oh, okay, I can kind of see chat. I can kind of see me. Can't really see a whole lot of stuff. If I start to... Uh, drop frames and stuff like I did earlier this week. Somebody let me know and and I'll, uh, you know, weep bitterly, I guess. But uh been working on my uh, my silver test. One, you know, a true silver, if it's tapped just right, it'll, it'll ring just like a silver bell. And uh, yesterday I was trying to do that, but I had the glove on and this, the, the coin kept falling off. And that was a pretty good coin there. So... Uh, before we get started, I'll go ahead and put on the I like the black nitrile gloves. Just because for me, I can use them for other stuff like around in the shop, cleaning guns and other dirty jobs, changing changing the oil on the truck, things like that. And uh, so uh, we're off to a great coin seminar weekend bunch of stuff happened yesterday lots of shows lots of great shows man um i was there from the start and i saw most of them i was working and i still watched or listened to the shows i had had my little ipad on hand most of the time towards the end of the day the work uh, kind of slowed down and i pretty much just watched <laughs> just watched the coin seminar weekend but these things have a way of uh when you do the same thing a lot and hear a lot of people talking about it, even if it's really good stuff, you can uh, you can kind of get lulled into the doldrums. But uh, I, on the other hand, am fresh as a daisy. So y'all uh, hang on to your hats. We're gonna have some fun. We always have fun at the shop, and we always try to learn something here. Uh, two two main goals of this of this channel is to have fun and teach something learn something too while I'm at it. Uh, I, I, I learn as, and teach. Anyway, you guys, I uh, hope everybody checked out Joe Durbin's show. It was his first show just a little while ago and um, he did a great job. Beth came on this morning too. Always fun to see Beth and um, you know we there's Beth there. Hey Beth and um, we uh, we appreciate all those folks. And I uh, I looked up and won a giveaway on on Joe Durbin's show, so I'm looking forward to that. 
later uh, this week, most everybody knows, on uh, tomorrow, there will be the big giveaway of the uh, several things. There's going to be the copper round that, that Riser gave. Now, that's going to be on Ken's show, Ken Peavy. There's going to be a silver round that Paula donated, and there's going to be the gold coin, too. So you got copper, you got silver, and gold. Now, everyone wishes for silver and gold, of course, but uh, we got copper to boot, so we, we got it covered. That'll be a big thing, and, um, you know, we're going to we're going to kind of have a little celebration there of sorts for the very first coin seminar weekend now um let's look over here in the chat line and see what's happening hello hoogie there's miss beth um oh it says i'm buffering oh well let's see what can we do ken says i don't have the dexterity yeah it does take some dexterity to do that but uh, works better if you don't have to wear a glove or anything. And then you can just tap it so the another coin makes the best sound. Doesn't that sound great? That's 90% silver right there. One day, uh, my son and I were in the shop and something happened. We were goofing around. And I said, you know, we have a lot of shop in the fun, don't we? <laughs> and he said, yeah, that's right, Dad. Um, let's see. It looks like... Eh, let me take take a look here at my my streaming symptoms, and I, I see a yellow. I see yellow, so maybe we're okay. Y'all, let me know if it gets horribly uh, unwatchable. Um, speaking of of fun, um, you know, not all coins are or even valuable to be interesting or fun this one here i call that my darlington stripe penny now some of y'all know i grew up on the mean streets of florence south carolina which is right next door to darlington county where they have the rice and um i used to actually enjoy watching the rice but uh those days are gone I, i've kind of gotten tired of it um one thing that, that the I hope never happens with the coin hobby is that we get too weird and run people off because it's too weird, you know. I think NASCAR has done that to a lot of a lot of their good fans. But this is the Darlington Stripe Penny. Got this got the streak on his face just like the cars do by the end of the race. And uh ah, that thing is worth almost one cent US, so that's pretty good. But I tell you, uh, a penny doesn't have to be um, anything uh, monetarily valuable. Um, my father-in-law's a—he's a good coin collector. He has a tremendous collection of just about all the American coins, and you know, near complete sets of everything, and complete sets of everything else, and all of that. He—he—he he, uh, he owns many coins, but his favorite coins of them all is the face facts on a page in a flip book. He says. These are my most treasured coins of all. He says, um, these are the ones that were in my mother's purse on the day she died. And uh, it's about a dollar and 17 cents worth of, of face value. <laughs> and they're all circulated. But to him, those coins are priceless. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, there's one dollar. Snake. Good to see you. Mike Wolf is here. Um, what else going on over there? I keep lagging and buffering. Oh, gosh. Hit the stop streaming button. Wait 10 seconds. Start streaming again. Okay. You guys hang on a second. We'll see. Can we do that? And we've got a green light. I hope that's better. And thank you, Professor, for the heads up on that. I've seen, I've seen uh, Ken do that. I've seen SJ do that before, but um, gosh, I don't, I don't stream very much at all, so I don't know. You know, I've never tried it myself. Looks like you're actually uh, doing better now. It says restart, start recording. Okay. Now, 
Are we going? Yeah, we got green on here again. Okay. Are we ready? Green light is good, yes. All right, so we're, we got the green light. We're in the left lane now, folks. Maybe I better get going, going quickly before we uh, lose the stream. I don't know what's happened here with my my streaming system. I had a whole video of, of drop frames earlier this week and and uh, you know you guys were kind enough to, to watch it and, and uh, tough it out with me. But yeah let me know if if we got technical issues because they might be fixable and they might not. Um, we're here today to talk about the Morgan silver dollars, which is my favorite coin. Mrs. Hoogie likes the peace dollars. I like the Morgans. And the 1878 Morgan silver dollars. Let's take a look at this. Um, earlier this week, I did a I did a, a short show about some of the prices of these. This is new, uh, Numismedia FMV.com. And uh, this shows our Morgan dollars in the lower grades. This is the good to extra fine 40. If you look on it, it's, uh, it doesn't look like it did the other day. It looked like a Blake Shelton song the other day. It was red, 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 all over the place except for the key dates and maybe the CCs, a few others. Now we've got black. They've, they've kind of leveled off. And I saw a couple of greens up there. But look at all, all, these, all these little common dates over here. And especially up through the 80s, look at them, $24 for the lowest grade, 24s, 24s. Um, the silver price has gone bumped up just a little bit. And sure enough, those coins that have very little numismatic value have now um, leveled off. Okay. Reason I show this today is look at these right here. We've got the uh, 78s, 78 here. 78 7 over 8 78 7 tail feathers what is going on 78 7 tail feathers reverse of 79 goodness gracious and then if we look down here we have a 79s with reverse of 78 and the, the same story with an 80cc so the 1880 cc with the reverse of the 78 what in the world is the reverse of the 78 the reverse of the 79 uh, most of us know seven or eight tail feathers. What is really going on here, though? Let me get that out of your way. Back to here. Um, we have to start with the, uh, the first coin. Now, the first Morgan Silver Dollar, it was, um, it was given to the president at that time. It was Rutherford B. Hayes, and we did a show about that back in the springtime. The first Morgan Silver Dollar, which we have one of them here. I'm going to move myself out of the way. Okay. 1878. Looks like it's uh, probably a mint state. Looks good. Flip over. Take a look at the other side. That's what we want to see today. There were changes on that obverse during 78, but we're not going to worry about them. Okay, now if you want to, you know, look closely enough, you can count these tail feathers. They count from, this is one thing that counts from right to left if you're numbering them. And I uh, see it's so little. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight tail feathers. We know that one is the A reverse. Reverses are listed as A, B, C, and so forth. So this one is eight tail feathers. It is the first one. But... To me, it's, it's, it's hard to count those. As I get older, I can't concentrate long enough to count to eight. <laughs> and my eyesight is unreliable too, even if I have a, a magnifier of some sort. I do better by looking right up here, right there where the old English eye touches the wing. Almost all of those original A, Reverses have the eye touch the wing, just like this one does. Now, there are some that do not have that, but in general, as my philosophy teacher used to say, speaking in general and for the most part, that is the case. And that's a that to me is the key pickup point for um, 
for the Morgan reverses of seven. Now you can tell I've been listening to Man Mantic talking about pickup points. But um, so we'll take just a second here and we'll go to our mock up. Now we made a mock up. I'm going to put that right there. A. Can you read that? Mrs. Hoogie was not happy about another hole in that wall. It's already got two holes from where I tried to put this board, this board, there, um, on that side. It says, it says uh, we got uh, buffering problems again. Okay, we're going to take just a second and try stop. Wait a minute. Did we hit the stop recording or did we hit the stop recording button, don't we? Yeah. Okay, hang on just a second. Okay. And we've got red. We've got red again. Now we've got yellow. We've got yellow, we've got green now. Okay, um, and folks, I don't know what happens there. That's uh, that's a little more technical than a hobby shop guy like me can can explain. And we've got red again. We got a lot of drop frames. We got yellow. We got green. We've got a lot of things happening here. I've got green right now. Okay, and got red again. Well. Folks, yeah, you know, keep an eye on the back wall. You never know what might be on that, uh, what might be on there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to green to yellow to red. It's like one of those crazy stoplights. It goes green and then suddenly yellow and then red, red for a long time. So I don't know why. Hang on just a second. <clears throat> Hang on just a second. What can we do with that? We've got green right now. Now it's orange. Now it's red. Orange. Y'all hang on just a second. Let me um There's oldies and goodies. Okay. How's that, folks? Looks like we've got a green now. And now we've got red again. Golly. Folks, I don't know. I may have too many things open. Let's try like this. Let's try like that. Maybe we can close this over. Yeah, tell the family to stop watching cat videos. That's a good idea. I'm not sure, uh, well, Mrs. Hoogie's in the house, but I don't think she wants to interfere with our, our stuff. Oh, hang on just a second, this is not good. Okay, I've got a little bit of green I got green lights here. It's me, Brian, is in the house. How you doing, Brian? And there's uh, Karen St. Singh. Good to see you. Oldies and goodies. I said hello just a second ago. I think we were in, we're in the red line then. And um, may have a little bit of a little bit of luck here. No, nope. there it went. This is not good. We're in and out. We're in and out all the time. Hang on, you guys. Yeah, they do, cheapskate. You know, you know yourself um, how that how that goes sometimes. Well, I see a green light right now. I don't know how long that's going to hold up for us. So I'm going to talk fast. Okay, we've got our a reverse our, our pickup point is right there 
Okay, this is the mock-up we made um, just the other day. Um, I, I told about it on on another video. I used to make a lot of that kind of stuff back when I worked at the museum. Okay, SJ, that's a good idea. I'll just do my thing. Um, that was the eight tail feathers. The next uh, thing that came along, they had to uh, do all this real quickly. They had to get started quickly, even with the eight tail feathers. They had to have it, have it going and ready to make. That's one reason that Morgan's um, design was picked because his was going to be easier to produce than uh, Barber's. Um, Lindemann uh, wrote in a, in a telegraph that he didn't see much difference between them, but we would, we would use Morgan's. Now, I've, heard, I've read other things that Lindemann and, and uh, Barber were not getting along too great and all this kind of stuff. All right, so this is the next coin that was supposed to come out was the B reverse. Now the B reverse, I'll get my finger out of the way. All right, B reverse has a little bit of space up there at that first um, checkpoint. So we know it's not the A reverse. We can count tail feathers, obviously, seven tail feathers on this thing. And uh, if we take the time and can concentrate that long, then, uh, you know, that'd be great. On this one, you'll see the A is perilously close to the to the wing over here where it says America going down. And uh, on many of them, they actually touch. Some of them have a little die chip in there and stuff. But, but this being so close, in fact, usually touching, is the second pickup point. So let me grab my other letter. I'll go to the mock-up back here. And I'm going to slide that under there as B. Okay. Now... You guys can see what I actually just did if I move this to over here. All right, mock-up has A and B, and uh, you know, that's our first two checkpoints. Now, in between, they did everything in a hurry on this, as I said. So in between the A reverse and the B reverse, we had, I'll show again, this is a 78. 78 Morgan, it is a Philly, and in between, they were in such a hurry that they actually put the B reverse right over the A reverse, and that's how we get the seven over eight tail feathers. This one is really pretty strong. You cannot see it from that far away. I have to get it up here onto the, onto the deck, and then we'll take a look there. You can see those tail feathers under there sticking out from underneath right along uh, right along there and uh, in real life I can count probably five of them right here I only see well I do see five of them here but um, this is what they call the strong seven over eight and it is the most valuable of the um, Well, it is uh, more valuable because it is a strong seven over eight. There are weaker ones too. Now I'm gonna put that over here. We only look at that. That's really kind of a, um, uh, just a variety rather than anything. We throw that in because it's the combination of B and C reverses. Remember the reverses are, are letters. The obverses are numbers. Now, that reverse, the, the, we, the B reverse, that's the one that they call the 78 reverse because it was the uh, one that um, came along. I got, I got the wrong coin in there. Yeah. Ken, I'm not ready either. <laughs> 79. Um, the... What was I saying about the B reverse? They call it the 78 reverse. The eight tail feather reverse is also the 78 reverse, but it's just eight tail feathers. So nobody, uh, no, there, I'm nice and big there. Um, 
and, mouse, and then the mouse doesn't want to participate. And that's good. But um, the uh, way that works, I'm going to learn to keep things static the way some of you guys do. Um, Karen says, I love Morgans too. You know, they're easy to fall in love with. They have a thing about them. They're, they're big, they're beautiful, and uh, they're, they're valuable. Some of them have lost value. These, these real common dates that are low, low grade have lost some value here lately and people got people, you know, up in arms and whatever. But there's a, don't, not to worry, the uh, silver prices are, are going to come back someday and, and the Morgans are certainly going to keep their numismatic value. So, speaking of numismatic value, here comes the C reverse. Now this is one they call the 79 reverse. Well, they call it 79 reverse for because it's a, it's a 78. Well, it came out a little later in the year. Actually, I think it came out in about June of 78. But from June of 78, it went on and carried all the way through 1904. And uh, so it was the reverse of the last half of 78, all of 79, and every other date until the end of 1904. And it probably would have been changed again had not Henry Lindemann died. Henry Lindemann still had um, issues with this reverse, even after you know changing it like this. Now we're just going over the major changes. There are minor ones too, galore. Okay, what's different about the C reverse? Let's go our checkpoints first. Our our space is here between the old English I and the wing. We got a space. That's so it's uh, not the A reverse. We got a little bit of space over here. Doesn't, doesn't really look like it's going to you know, be perilously close or touching. But what we can look at is down here. These feathers on the arrows, are the top feather is slanted. Yeah, they call it the fletch. Um, sometimes they abbreviate it for SAF, which is slanted arrow feather. When you're talking about the 78s, um, there's a slanted arrow feather. I'm going to go back to the B reverse here. Just push that out of the way. And look at those arrow feathers. They're straight. And um, because they're straight, um, we know that, that whenever we see that, it's either an A or a B reverse. A and B both have straight, straight fletches right there, that top arrow. So go back to the C reverse right over here slanted okay so we got that we got that one learned let's take a look over here yeah i have got this way too big y'all don't want to see me that much and i'm really making a mess out of my stuff we'll go back to over here if we could yeah we actually have done this before, folks. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So we got our A checkpoint, our B checkpoint, and our C checkpoint will be down here. We'll put a little label in there. For our, our slanted arrow feathers. So if you can remember this little this little image right here, by the way, I wrote copy down there. You can't really read it. Just to keep the feds off my tail. Um, if you can remember this little mock-up, the A, the B, and the C checkpoints, you've got it, man. Um, that's that's all all it takes. I'm gonna try to sh get that out of the way, shrink it down. It was just, stuff just doesn't want to work with the mouse today. I've had troubles with it here lately. The mouse is weird. Are we playing darts? Yeah, looks like it. And we got the wrong thing. Folks, um Yeah. We're gonna get this we're gonna get this moved around here some kind of way. Have to shrink it and then move it again. Alright. Now, speaking of Paula, special thanks to Paula for helping to organize uh, the the clues for all these channels. There's no telling how many emails and stuff went around. 
Um, I had a clue, but I forgot what my clue was. So, you know, look around here, you might see it. But um, special thanks to Paula. Now, Monday will be the, the big giveaway for um, the silver $5 piece on Ken's show. Also, there will be silver round, copper round like we talked about before. We're going to do a giveaway right here. And in case we haven't had enough technical troubles, look at that. Look at that. Now that doesn't even want to move for me now. The whole software is like spoiled. Look at that. Um, well, somehow we've lost our ability to go back to the USB scope. You guys have seen it, many of you, beforehand. Um, and uh, we're going to do a little little quiz. We'll change we'll change the thing. Um, I will relocate that coin one of these days. And um, here goes the quiz. I'll get ready. Um, when I hit start, okay. The question is. It's kind of like, um, I'll, I'll say something about you. You tell me what coin that we're talking about. This coin, it's a Morgan silver dollar. And it, in the year of its mintage, we're looking for the date and the mint. The year in its mintage, they ran out of silver. Okay? And I'm going to, gosh, where's my chat thing? It's gone too. This, this computer's really giving me a fit. Okay, go. They ran out of silver. What year and what mintage? These coins were, um, a certain number of them were minted, uh, let's see here, 296,000 were originally minted. When the GSA hoard came out, 147,000 of them turned up in the GSA hoard. So, not 1878, not 1878. Oh, it's a it's a key date among the the uh, Morgan silver dollars, and um, you might even you might even as as per usual around here you might check around the the room here for a a clue. But um, I'm watching the chat line. 1876, no. 1883, no. 19 anything, no. 1878. No, I mentioned 1893. That's close, Matthew. No, you can guess as many times as you want. People are struggling with this one. This is this one. I, I uh, Ken knows this one. This one I mentioned earlier this week is one of my favorite coins. 89 CC. That's close, Hoosier. 18, 1894. That's a good guess too. Um, 1894. They closed this mint. They closed the mint there in 1894. Uh, they they struck their last coin there in 1893. Good guess, Matthew. Nope. Nope. Uh, they they made. This is tough for y'all. They made the uh, Morgan silver dollars between 1878 up through what year? 1880. When did they stop making them? Let's see. I'm still looking at the at the line here. Uh, it wasn't 1904. No, no. By the way, 1904 didn't have any Denver's. Um, 93.0, that's a good guess. No. They ran out of silver, though. Even though the silver was right there, nearby, the railroad owners colluded with the mine owners to ship all the, the silver that came out of the Comstock load. They were shipping it to San Francisco. And the uh, this mint, which was right next door, and you might even get a hint if you look around. Um, this mint right next door didn't get all, enough silver to uh, to make but about three months worth of coins. So they ran out of silver and they were stuck. They had, they were making other coins, but they could not make silver coins. All right, folks. Uh, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're running out of years. 
if you pull, oh, well, no, no, not 91 cc, not 93 cc. It is a cc. We we can we can tell that. It's a key date of the ccs, and Hoogie wasn't quite ready for all of this. 1891, 1888, 1890, 1896 CC. No such thing, oldies. Um, oh, 11, 889. Or I think that's supposed to be 1889. It's not 1889, although that is a key date. 1884 CC. Close, uh, 1884. Gosh, uh, 84% of the minted coins turned up in the GSA hoard. No fooling. 1880 CC, no, close. 1895 CC, no such thing. 1892 CC, 1881, Rivendell Coins. Rivendell Coins has the answer. Now let's make sure somebody else didn't, didn't get in there first. Y'all can stop guessing. Rivendell has the answer on this one. And the, boy, that took a while there. I'm uh, I'm looking, yeah, I'm pretty sure Rivendell had that one. I was watching that so closely I could barely speak. But uh, check in here. Yeah, it looks like Rivendell's got it. Um, if anybody, <laughs> yeah, SJ says, phew. All right. Ken says it was Rivendell. So congratulations, Rivendell. I've got my email in the uh, stuff in the description down here. Send me your shipping address and claim your prize. It'll be a uncirculated, it'll be that, that C reverse that we looked at. The 1879, let's go back over here. Yeah, my, my software just doesn't want to do what it normally does because it, it won't close my, my goofy picture. There we go. You just have to do it like that and move it up. 1879, this will be your coin, Rivendell. It's got the C reverse. How do we know? We can check this, the checkpoints. There's A, there's B, and C. Yep, it's got the slanted arrow feather, so there you go. Um, congratulations to Rivendell on that one. And, uh, gosh, we're, we've run over just a little bit. But fortunately, there's nobody behind Hoogie on this thing. Uh, who's up next? Um, it is who's up next? I have to. Uh, I had my. I did have it up here. Who is who is up next at two o'clock? Somebody help us out. That's what I get for not putting the putting the thing up there. Let's move that out of the way so we can see the chat better. CFA. Coins for Amateurs, 2 o'clock. I think it is um, uh, kids and coin collecting. And um, that'll be a good one. Y'all want to check out that one? Um, there's good shows all, all through the rest of the day. And Ken PV at uh, 10 o'clock, I think it is, tonight for the big show. So... Um, Anyway, we appreciate you guys stopping by, and I apologize for the technical problems. Um, if you have questions or you know want to criticize me or whatever it is, uh, send me a send me an email, and, and we'll try to take care of that. Uh, anybody knows, I'll just have to keep working with this software. Um, I've used it before, and I really struggled with it today. So. We'll see you guys around on YouTube. Um, take care of your coins and take care of yourself. And for goodness sakes, take care of the coin community too. Um, this, is, this is the only one we got, so take care of it. We'll see y'all.
strawberry juice. I see you, man. Enjoy your breakfast. Okay, folks. See y'all next time.